Hello there everyone and welcome back to Edward Elgar's Very Easy Violin Etudes. Um, today we are on the very last one, which is letter F as in fabulous. And this is a really tricky one. And so I'm gonna make this into two parts. We need a preliminary uh, video <laughs> to talk about the bowings, and then we'll actually play through the etude together in a different video. So this week we're gonna just get used to understanding and doing the bowings because they're really, they're hard to do. Um, and so today we're gonna focus on the detache stroke, which we've already learned. Um, we're gonna review staccato and spiccato. So I'm gonna, you can decide when you actually do play this etude whether you wanna play it spiccato or staccato, or perhaps you can play it both ways. We're also gonna talk about accents. So let's review the detache stroke first. So if you take a look at the etude, there's lines over or under some of the quarter notes, like in the first measure, there's a line underneath each note. And they don't really need to be there. It's just that we're doing a very smooth and, cont and um, continuous sound for the um, quarter notes. And then the next measure is the complete opposite, opposite excuse me, um, with the dots. So that would be either staccato, which is disconnected, or spiccato, which is bouncy. But, you know, nevertheless, it's a very contrasting stroke. And so they want to make sure that you don't end up applying that stroke to the quarter notes. So that they're just showing you that they're different. So um, let's, let's take a look at the first measure articulation, which is the one with the lines underneath everything, which I'm going to just call the detache stroke. We're going to do that on an open string to start with. So I'm going to hop over to the A string and detache is simply separate bows with a smooth and continuous stroke. So if we're in four, four, one, two, three, four. smooth those changes out. So that would be the detache stroke. So in your music, let's write detache or smooth and continuous. You could remember to write fingers help over that stroke. Okay, let's try that one together. So maybe pause and pop that in your music and, and then we'll come back and we'll try this again together. So Grab your violin when you can, and we're gonna pop over to the D string this time. Let's try detache. Rather than being in the lower half, let's be more in the middle this time. Let's see how that is. Ready? over to the G string. Let's do the G string as well, but this time maybe we try it in the upper half. And let's try a slightly different contact point. So if you were too close to the bridge, let's maybe move more in the middle or a little bit closer to the fingerboard just to see in the upper half on the G string. Find the sweet spot on your violin. But that wouldn't work very well down there, right here. Is right up there for my violin. And of course we have the E string as well. Let's try using the whole bow. So we're gonna slow down. The E string, nice and close to this bridge. Close to the bridge. Nice and heavy. So 
so that would be our detache stroke, nice and smooth and connected. That's what we're gonna do when we see a line over or under the notes. So the other um, bowing that we have is the dot. So in measure two, you've got a little dot underneath and over those little eighth notes there. And the thing is, is that this is so maddening in music is that this dot can mean so many things. This one little dot can mean spiccato, which would be bouncing. It could be staccato, which is on the string and separating. It could also, depending on the context and dynamic and everything, be more like a martelet stroke, which is this one. So how do you know? <laughs> how would you know? You'd kind of have to use your own musical sense. You could also listen to recordings and things. Um, you could, you know, maybe judge based off of the context and time period of the piece, you know? Um, but anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to do the staccato, which is on the string, and we're also going to talk about spiccato, which is bouncing so that you can kind of go back and forth between them if you want when you do the etude next week. So let's start with staccato, which is on the string. And the, I think the most important thing with staccato is that you're separating the sound from the next note. So you have to stop the bow. So let's think move, stop. And the way I'm controlling that is not from my hand, but from the very beginning of my arm. So I'm thinking of pulling the arm open and then closing it and stopping immediately. So I'm not grabbing it at the end. I just simply stop. So let's try that. Let's call this move, stop. Move, stop. So the other thing with um, staccato is that it's kind of a faster stroke as well. It's not necessarily so slow. It's more fast. So what we're going to do is open the arm faster. Versus but. so faster bow stroke for that second time. The third thing we're going to think about with staccato is also just the fingers. So it has kind of an, a little bite at the beginning, not a big bite, but just a little bite. And especially if you're going fast, that helps to separate the sound from the previous note. So like in measure two, we're doing um, eighth notes there. kind of using my first finger to help with that but I'm, I'm also since it's so fast using a smaller joint I'm kind of using my wrist there if I use my arm it just I can't control it so it's a smaller little joint by the way if your hand looks like this good luck your hand and wrist have to look like this. So it's like you're dropping your, you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm playing the violin today. Oh my gosh, right? It's not this. It's like, you know, pompous woman with a bag hand, <laughs> right? The handbag arm. So that's, those are some thoughts for the staccato. Staccato is also usually um, done in the upper part of the bow. So if I was to play the first two measures, not that we're doing that right now, but just to see, I would try to make sure that I don't go back to the frog. I would try to at least try to hang out in the middle. Right, so let's maybe make a note in your music that you 
you want to stay more in the middle or upper half of the bow if you can for those um, eighth notes or the staccato stroke. It doesn't always work out. Of course, you can try it here too. Okay, so those are um, detache so far and staccato. Like I said though, that little dot could mean spiccato as well. So let's, let's figure out what spiccato is, um, just in case you want to try that one as well. We should be able to do both, you know. So spiccato is when we bounce the bow, and spiccato is done in the lower half where the balance point is. So it's, it's really not in the halfway place, it's in the lower part of the bow where the balance point might be. So you can kind of take a moment and see if you can find where that is. It's kind of the lower third of the bow. And the reason why we want to find the balance point approximately is because that's where your weight is kind of equal on both sides. And so you're not having to compensate with the balance. So Let's put your bow on the A string, for example, in the balance point, and we're gonna just start by vertically bouncing on one point, but pretty fast. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And don't bounce too high. We don't wanna be in crazy person mode, but start to tighten it up and start to notice how the down propels the up. Down, up, down, up, down, up. If you don't have a strong down, you won't have an up. So it's really important that we actually do have a tight and firm downward stroke so that you have a nice clear upward stroke. So the other thing is the contact point. It's harder to do that here and you're going to hit all sorts of strings down here. So let's hang out a little higher, closer to the bridge. You're going to have to find the sweet spot. Every violin is different. Um, but start bouncing. And when you bounce also, let's make sure, watch my hand for a minute. We're not doing this. We're bringing the whole arm in one piece so that it's balanced. Okay, so that's the first step. The second step is a tiny motion back and forth. So start with up and down, balance point. If you migrated, let's migrate back to the balance point and then just tiny back and forth. Remember that the down propels the up, so if you start to lose it, it's because your bounce isn't even. Alright, so let's see if we can sustain it for a while together. Spiccato can be very fast as well. So, of course, if you can do this on one string, then you can potentially do it on multiple strings, but the string crossing is the tricky thing. So, you want to avoid major crosses like this. So, if you do notice that you're, you know, going to be on the top three strings, I'm going to try and balance my arm so that I can kind of easily flick between the strings rather than now I'm on this one, now I'm on this one, now I'm on this one. Try to do You see how my elbow is not doing? It's kind of more balanced. Anyway, I would definitely practice some open strings or if you can apply it to your scale at all or just a hand pattern. All right, so um, just some things to think about. So uh, the moral of the story is that when we do look at this etude next week, we might try whenever we see a dot playing it staccato on the string or we might try it, or and, we might try it spiccato, which is off the string. So the last stroke that we need to look at are those little accents in measure three, in measure three and elsewhere. Um, an accent applies to the beginning of the stroke, and it's going to be done with the first finger, but 
it is smooth and continuous as well. So it's not like you're going to be doing a martelet stroke, which separates the, the sound. So for example, it has a strong accent at the beginning, but an accented note would be more like this. So the sound is continuous, for example. Can you tell the difference? Versus. Trying to keep the sound connected. So that's easier to do with a smaller amount of bow. So let's maybe work with the upper part of the bow. And we're gonna use first finger, press down with first finger. Well, first of all, let's do detaché. Maybe we do detaché first, so. And then we're gonna start to start every bow stroke with a little weight from the first finger. And watch where your contact point is. Doesn't sound very good. Doesn't sound very good. So you have to find out where that special place is on the violin for you to do that accent. All right, so if you can practice detaché, smooth and connected, staccato, separated. Remember, we started with move, stop, and then we did a faster bow stroke with the move, stop, and then we practiced faster, tinier strokes using the first finger to kind of separate the strokes. And then we practiced spiccato bouncing. And remember, you need, you really, really need the down to propel the up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Keep it tight and then start to go back and forth. Teeny tiny bow strokes. If you can keep it on one string, try to go across the strings, do some string crossings. Find your balance with your arm. And remember, spiccato is done at the balance point, speaking of balance. And then we talked about accents. So an accent applies to the beginning of the stroke, but it doesn't necessarily, it just depends on if there's some other articulation with the accent, but if it's just an accent, you're gonna use the weight from your first finger to have the, big, the stroke begin with a bite. But you're gonna still have that smooth and continuous sound when you get to the end and change. So, Let's work on these strokes this week and I will see you next week when we finish up this last etude in the very easy etudes by Edward Elgar. All right, you guys, happy practicing.